Friends, you've seen it all over the news, the devastation in Asheville from those floods that have swallowed entire communities. They tell you it's just another natural disaster, just another case of extreme weather. But what they don't tell you, what they refuse to tell you, is what's really behind this catastrophe. This isn't just some random act of nature. No, these floods are a message, a judgment, a divine response. You see, Asheville is no ordinary town. It's a place crawling with occultists, witches, and those who openly defy the word of God. Look it up. This is a place where they've embraced witchcraft like it's just some harmless lifestyle choice where covens proudly gather to perform their dark rituals in the open. I'm not talking about a few French crazies hiding in basements. I'm talking about organized groups like Coven Old and Wild that publicly celebrate witchcraft, cast spells, and hold their so-called Sawan rites for all to see. They invoke Hecate, a goddess of the underworld. They bring in spirits, they cast hexes, and they think it's all fun and games. But God is not mocked. They've brought darkness upon themselves, and now God's judgment is upon them. These witches, these pagans, they think they have power. But their power is nothing compared to the Almighty. They call upon their false gods, their demons, and think that they control the forces of nature. But when the creator of heaven and earth sends a flood, it's not some spell, it's his wrath. The floods that have swept through Asheville are no accident. They are a warning, a clear signal that God will not tolerate this kind of abomination any longer. Look around at the cities that have embraced paganism, witchcraft, and the occult. Asheville is just one of many. They've turned their backs on the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and instead, they worship idols, call upon demons, and participate in rituals that spit in the face of everything holy. But we know what happens when a city or a nation turns its back on God, don't we? Think about the cities in the Bible, Sodom, Gomorrah. What happened to them when their wickedness reached the heavens? Fire and brimstone. God didn't just give them a slap on the wrist. He wiped them from the face of the earth. And this, my friends, is what's happening in Asheville. This flood is a shot across the bow, a chance for them to repent before it's too late. But if they don't, if they continue down this path, they'll meet the same fate. And let's not forget, this isn't just about witchcraft. Asheville has become a stronghold for everything that stands against the teachings of Christ. This is a city that proudly embraces progressive values that mock the very foundation of God's law. They hold parades celebrating lifestyles that the Bible calls sin. They've turned their back on the traditional family. They've rejected the truth that we are created in the image of God, male and female he created us. And as if that wasn't enough, they've welcomed all kinds of new age mysticism, yoga retreats, and practices that have no place in a Christian nation. These things open doors to demonic influence, and yet they act like they're just relaxing or connecting with nature. This is not a surprise to those of us who are paying attention. For years, people have warned that Asheville is a spiritual battleground. And now we're seeing the consequences of ignoring those warnings. Look at the devastation. Look at the homes underwater, the businesses destroyed. People's lives have been torn apart by this flood, but the truth is, it didn't have to be this way. The Bible is clear, if a people repent and turn from their wicked ways, God is merciful. He will heal the land. But instead of repentance, what do we see? Defiance. We see them continuing to celebrate their witchcraft, continuing to reject the truth of God's word. And yet, there are some who still want to pretend that this is all just a coincidence. 
They'll tell you that this is about climate change or global warming. Let me tell you something, friends, God controls the weather. The Bible says that he sends the rain on the just and the unjust, and when the land sins against him, he withholds the rain or sends it in overwhelming measure. Look at the evidence. This flood isn't some random weather event. It's not just another hurricane. It's a direct result of Asheville's spiritual condition. You cannot open the doors to the occult, to witchcraft, to demonic forces, and expect God to look the other way. The problem isn't just Asheville. This is a reflection of what's happening in our nation as a whole. America has turned its back on God, and we're seeing the consequences. We've allowed prayer to be taken out of schools. We've legalized the slaughter of the unborn. We've redefined marriage, mock gender, and now we're letting witchcraft and paganism creep into the mainstream. If we continue down this path, there will be more Ashevilles. There will be more floods, more fires, more earthquakes. This is just the beginning. God is patient, but his patience is not endless. So what can we do? First and foremost, we need to pray. We need to stand in the gap for Asheville and for our nation. We need to pray for repentance, for revival. We need to pray that the people of Asheville would see this disaster for what it is, a wake-up call from God Almighty. But we also need to act. We need to speak out against the occult, against witchcraft, against the moral decay that's spreading like a cancer. We need to expose these lies for what they are, tools of the enemy to lead people away from the truth. And we need to make sure that we are living lives that are pleasing to God. We cannot stand against the darkness if we're dabbling in it ourselves. This flood is a tragedy, yes. But it's also an opportunity. An opportunity for the people of Asheville to repent and turn back to God. An opportunity for all of us to wake up and see the spiritual war that's raging around us. The Bible says that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. And let me tell you, the forces of evil are alive and well in Asheville. But we have the victory in Christ. We have the power of the Holy Spirit within us, and we must use that power to tear down these strongholds. The floods in Asheville are not just a tragedy, they are a message. A message that God is still in control. A message that He will not be mocked. A message that it's time for us to repent and return to Him before it's too late. Because if we don't, this is only the beginning of what's to come.